microphones as we speak. <coughs> okay, so uh, the presentation is about Capsicum and Casper and how Capsicum and Casper help to uh, avoid using hacks that are currently used to sandbox applications. Uh, so before we start, let me introduce uh, Marius first. Uh, Marius was uh, uh, Google's of summer, uh, Google Summer of Code student who was working on Capsicum, a successful student, and is now working with me. Uh, and uh, my name is Paweł. Uh, I work at Wheel Systems. Uh, we do security uh, products. And I'm also free busy committer for more than 10 years now. <coughs> so uh, why we decided for the title and why we, uh, how we came up with the doc idea in the first place. So this is the mailing list that uh, basically talks about uh, uh, capabilities, object capabilities. Uh, and uh, a question was sent there. Uh, what does people think? Uh, what do people think about uh, capsicum? Is it just a lipstick, lipstick on a pig, or maybe it's the solution? So we accepted the challenge. Uh, and some history. Uh, the biggest problem uh, with the operating systems we have now. Uh, be it Unixes or Windows, is that uh, both those systems were uh, actually designed with uh, more taking care of uh, separating user, uh, users uh, between <coughs> themselves. Uh, so uh, Unix, even Multix, was designed as multi-user system from the start. Uh, then co came Windows NT, uh, and Windows NT 4.0 I think was the first multi-user Windows version, uh, true, truly multi-user, because of course we had Windows versions before, which provide uh, some kind of separation, but it was not really for security. You just had different profiles. Uh, and of course, Mac OS X was uh, based on FreeBSD, so it was also uh, prepared to be multi-user operating system, but there was no real isolation between users' processes. Uh, so there was strong focus to actually protect uh, set UIDs uh, programs, so basically programs that elevate their, their uh, privileges when you execute them, like PassWD or uh, tools like that, uh, that require to access to root, to root uh, readable files. Uh, and of course, there was a strong focus to make the network demons secure, so uh, your machine cannot be hacked remotely. Uh, but nobody really cared about making PDF reader secure or making all the tools that doesn't require uh, set UID uh, uh, bit or uh, are not network demons. Uh, uh, nobody cared about security because. Uh, you cannot switch to different user or you cannot attack the uh, machine remotely. Uh, it's not really true, but uh, that was the idea. So what types of isolations do we have? Uh, nothing new. Uh, we have uh, hardware virtualization like Beehive, Zen, VMware VirtualBox. Uh, we also have operating system level virtualization like Jail Zones, Solaris Zones, uh, OpenVZ on Linux, uh, and we have uh, process sandboxing, Seedbelt from Mac OS X, SecComp from Linux, and uh, Capsicum. Uh, so I'm sure you all saw this picture already, but uh, does, uh, uh, this pretty much summarizes uh, uh, the shift uh, in how we uh, how we see security, how we, uh, uh, what we are trying to actually protect, because of course, uh, uh, protecting cute, uh, root user on your laptop is not really a uh, uh, good goal, because uh, root doesn't really uh, 
has any meaning. And if someone is able to uh, gain access to your account, I'm sure he will be able to uh, skip to root. Uh, so do we re really need this process isolation? Uh, uh, we had, a uh, uh, few weeks ago, we had a security event. Uh, my company is organizing a security event in Warsaw in the evening. We just invite people, uh, whoever is interested in security just comes in the evening and have some fun. So we, uh, we invited uh, Gunval Coldwin uh, to uh, Wheel Evening uh, to give a talk. He's from uh, Google security team. And uh, stuff like they do is, for example, uh, uh, in this period, they were able to, uh, mm, by fusing, uh, they were able to find, or at least that uh, 1120 bucks were fixed in FFmpeg. Uh, not sure how many wasn't fixed yet. But uh, even the fixes uh, the FFmpeg developers uh, did uh, introduced new bugs, new crashes. It was a long process, and I'm sure it's far from being finished. And this was only by uh, fusing. It's n it wasn't really a uh, security audit of the code. Uh, the same for Flash or uh, Adobe Reader. Uh, basically, user, uh, basically, tools like that have many bugs. Nobody cared about them, and still, many doesn't care about them. And uh, I would like to show you how uh, techniques that are currently used are not really feasible to address those problems because uh, most of the hacks we use to secure those applications actually require root access. You have to be root to uh, be able to change root or change your uh, UID. And uh, I would be really, uh, I wouldn't sleep well if I could, uh, if I would set UID to root to my FFmpeg uh, utility. That wouldn't be a good idea. Uh, okay, but let's try to uh, go uh, through all those, I call them hacks. You can call them portable uh, sandboxing techniques, if you want. Uh, so uh, the widely used technique was to just drop the credentials. And almost every tool does use some kind of sandboxing uh, change their uh, credentials, right? Uh, for example, <coughs> OpenSSH default sandbox uh, uh, mechanism does just that. Uh, it uses unprivileged SSH user. Uh, but uh, why, it, why it, is it hard to actually use that? Because it's very error prone. All those techniques are, were not really designed to, uh, to provide sandboxing. They are used because you can find them on almost every single operating system, but or at least Unix-like operating system. Uh, but you have some uh, things to remember about. For example, uh, when you change your UID, you have to change your uh, group ID as well. Uh, but when you change your group ID, you have to do it before you change your user ID because, of course, once you change your user ID, you have no longer permission to change your uh, group ID. Uh, and when changing your group ID, you have to remember that the, there can be much more groups uh, mm, that you should uh, drop before actually changing user ID and group ID. Um, that's the order I said about. Uh, also, you have to verify that all those operations actually succeed uh, because there are many problems with that. We had really nice uh, send mail uh, security bug uh, where Linux introduced POSIX capabilities, which are not a capabilities, it's just the name, but those are not really capabilities, just some uh, privileges, global privileges. Uh, there was a bug in SendMail where SendMail didn't really uh, check if uh, set UID succeed. Uh, so when SendMail didn't have this permission or privilege to change his own user ID, it was trying to drop privileges uh, because uh, it was running uh, as root, uh, but this operation failed. So SendMail was uh, running as root without actually dropping any privileges. Uh, 
so you have to verify if it succeeds. Another problem, you can have so resource limits. For example, this user cannot create more than that many processes. So if you try to change your user ID, you may hit resource uh, uh, limits. Uh, and of course, I'm not really sure, but uh, that's suspicion that uh, not on all operating systems, set UID uh, modifies all those uh, uh, mm, all those real effective and saved user ID and user group. Uh, and of course, the biggest issue is that it requires to be root. Mm. So uh, this is basically uh, what I think the code should look like, uh, and it should be uh, secure, I think, in that order. <coughs> So we drop all the groups, we set uh, group ID, we set user ID, we verify all those operations, and just to be sure, we verify them again. Change root, another way to sandbox your applications. So basically, change root just uh, restricts access to, your, uh, to the di directory you, uh, you gave to the uh, system call. Uh, for example, OpenSSH uh, use change root to change root to uh, slash var slash empty directory, which has no content. Uh, the unprivileged process cannot write to it, and uh, it should be pretty safe. But, uh, of course, change root uh, requires uh, root. Uh, once you uh, change your root directory, you have to remember uh, to change your current working directory to new root directory. Uh, if you don't do that, you can still access files outside of your new root. Uh, and of course, another problem, if, if you will leave uh, directory descriptors behind, uh, you can use fchangeD to actually escape from your change root. Uh, Another problem is that uh, all the path components uh, from the root path you are trying to change to uh, should be owned by root. If user can uh, write to the does directory, he can rename the directory, he can create a symlink, and you can change it to some different directory than you uh, hoped for. So this is also very important. Uh, and of course, you have to uh, check for change root and change your failures. And actually, doing this first bit uh, race free is also pretty challenging. It's not really easy to verify all the path components and be sure that you are change routing to the same directory that you have actually verified if there is no race between. Um, uh, so this is the code that implements that, although I skipped those two uh, bits at the top because the code would be just too large to, to fit on the screen. Uh, and of course, checking for open directories is very expensive if you have to scan all the descriptors that can be uh, used. Uh, uh, the same for ownership. It's re really tricky to do it right, but and also pretty expensive. Uh, Set a limit. Uh, this is nice hack. It's used, uh, as far as I know, uh, I know only about OpenSSH using this uh, to implement uh, some kind of sandboxing. So when you uh, limit your num number of uh, descriptors uh, to zero, you won't be able to uh, make internet connections anymore, open any files, and stuff <laughs> like that. So it's a really nifty trick. Uh, you can also limit file size and uh, this allow forking by limiting number of process to zero. Uh, but it's not really widely used because I think it's very impractical uh, to, uh, to not be able to do any kind of descriptor operations that you cannot duplicate your op uh, descriptor, you cannot receive descriptor that someone delegates to you. Uh, so it's very limiting. That's why I think it's not re widely used. Nice thing about that is that it doesn't require root access. It doesn't require root. 
there is also in kernel uh, you have this uh, p underscore sugit flag uh, which is set by the kernel when you do uh, set uid or when you execute set uid binary uh, and it can restrict various uh, interesting things for example uh, open ssh sandboxing drops privileges to ssh user uh, but every single session in the system, every single SSH session, a sandbox, uh, is running as the same user. So in theory, uh, if I break to the sandbox, I could then use ptrace uh, to, uh, to jump to another sandbox uh, because it's run by the same user. But because of this flag, it's not possible. Uh, so this is also a nice hack and also it restricts uh, various signals so uh, I cannot send all the signals uh, to different process uh, that has this flag I can only uh, send some subset uh, of signals hopefully secure subset uh, and there are here are some proofs uh, so we had a bug uh, where uh, there were missing checks for set UID or set git or set groups. Uh, someone forgot to check about them and it was a security uh, uh, bug. Uh, there was no set group call. So actually someone left all the groups owned by uh, uh, to which uh, uh, root user was the uh, member of. Uh, someone was uh, leaving those behind which uh, uh, allowed to do some uh, interesting things and someone called set UID bef uh, instead of set UID uh, set EUID so uh, this one only changes effective user ID and if you change effective user ID in Unix uh, you still uh, have saved user ID so you can easily uh, get back to your root uh, privilege by uh, calling set UID with uh, uh, basically with zero. Uh, set UID is not really used to change all the IDs, it's just to uh, change your uh, effective user ID so when you create a file this file is owned by this effective uh, uh, user ID but you can switch back to, uh, uh, to your uh, previous uh, UID which is in this case root. Uh, change root. Uh, there are a few bugs uh, when uh, people forgot to change the root, root after calling change root. Uh, there was one uh, bug we found uh, with uh, where uh, change root directory was readable by by the user, so you can do uh, things like uh, you can link set with binary to your change root and then create your own, for example, libc that will be loaded when you execute your uh, set UID binary. Uh, and of course, you, uh, once you uh, have root access, you can escape your change root easily. Uh, there was a bug, I think, in NetBSD where uh, this flag was not properly uh, checked and ptrace was allowed uh, uh, even, even if the process had this flag. So it's not really application bug. Uh, but it's worth to, uh, to know that uh, those sandbox techniques uh, require this to work. Uh, we didn't found any bugs with set error limit, but I think it's mostly because uh, uh, only a very small number of programs actually use that because it's very limiting, so maybe that's why and maybe we were, weren't looking properly. And for example, this is pro a patch that was proposed to fix uh, this missing change deer. Uh, and it, it is wrong because uh, uh, ignoring the fact that nobody checks the, uh, all the path components, the change deer is done, uh, the change deer is done before uh, changing root. So here, uh, this directory can be changed. So actually you can change deer to uh, totally different directory than you change root then to. Uh, I don't think it was committed or at least it was fixed because we checked uh, syslog-ng uh, source and it's better now. Uh, but even order of those operations is pretty important. 
Uh, okay, uh, in capability world, uh, you don't have access to global namespaces. And in uh, FreeBSD, you have quite a few of them. Can you see actually the text here? No. Uh, somebody knows how to turn on the lights? Okay. Okay. Uh, and we have all those techniques, uh, and we will see which ones actually protect uh, against uh, accessing various namespaces. So, for example, you have process IDs. Uh, set UID or change it won't help. Set uh, uh, PSUGIT does help a bit, that it, uh, in a way that it res restricts uh, uh, number of signals you can send to the process, but you can, of course, always list all the processes in the system. Uh, so if you will break to uh, OpenSSH sandbox, for example, and someone is using a tool that takes password as, a, as an argument, you can list uh, process uh, names and all the arguments and actually get the password. Of course, it's not really a great idea to do that, but uh, people do that. So. Uh, uh, file paths. That's of course uh, file system. So change root helps here. Set UID helps in a way that you cannot access root owned file systems and uh, files and stuff like that. And set a limit uh, does help a bit because you won't be able to open be because you cannot create new descriptors. Although you still can list directory content and stuff like that. Uh, NFS file handles. Uh, Set UID helps here because you have to be root to actually be able to convert or open file by NFS file handle. Uh, but even if you are change root, uh, you, if you change your root, you can still open files outside your root if you are if you are a root user. Uh, file system IDs, uh, those are basically uh, returned by uh, system calls like uh, get FS stat. Uh, you have this file system ID returned only for root. So if you drop your uh, credential privileges, uh, you won't get those. Uh, Sys controls. Uh, some of the f uh, set UID helps uh, at least. Uh, well, helps a lot, but uh, it doesn't protect uh, entire uh, Sys control trees because there are still sys controls that can be written by uh, everyone or all sys controls can be read by anyone uh, so it doesn't cover all the cases and uh, uh, psugit flag helps because uh, for example there are system calls that uh, allow to uh, change for example resource limits of processes with the same user id although they do check if the process doesn't have this flag uh, so it also helps, but uh, it doesn't cover all the cases. Uh, System 5 I IPC is not protected by any of those. So if you have uh, shared memory or semaphores uh, using System 5 IPC, uh, there is no protection using those techniques. Uh, POSIX IPC, uh, there is some protection where, you, where when you use set, uh, when you drop your privileges, but the best one, of course, is uh, just disallowing crea creation of new file descriptors. Uh, system clocks, you can, of course, read time, but you won't be able to modify system time if you are not root. Uh, for jails, uh, this, is, uh, this namespace is about jails, IDs, and stuff like that. So you can still list uh, available jails in the system. Uh, you won't be able to attach to a jail and do stuff like that if you are not root. Uh, CPU sets, it's not really important namespace, but nothing protects uh, about messing with it. The same for routing tables. You can just change your routing table uh, uh, if you want to. There is no checks, no security checks at all. Uh, protocol addresses, uh, this is about uh, doing uh, IP connections and also using, using uh, Unix domain sockets uh, for connections. Uh, so change root 
uh, does help when you, uh, so you cannot connect to Unix domain sockets. But it doesn't help when you want to, uh, when you just want to uh, be a part of, I don't know, spam botnet. For example, in FreeBSD, uh, we did use uh, this error limit, uh, set error limit, but I don't think we uh, use it anymore. Is there this around? Uh, we don't use error limit anymore, right? On FreeBSD, in SSH sandbox, we use Capsicum now. It does, or because I remember that we weren't able to use set error limit because we were using uh, uh, open crypto. Yeah, uh, we can't, so we can't, uh, we can't set the um, file descriptor limit to zero uh, because uh, crypto that opens file descriptor limit is not uh, Yes, we, when we use crypt, uh, crypto acceleration, it does require to open another file descriptor. So we weren't using, uh, weren't able to use set error limit uh, before Capsicum. Uh, which means that if my only goal is not to hack into your system, but just to create another box that will send spam for me, that's fine by me. I can break into your SSH sandbox. If I can break into your SSH sandbox, I'm able to send spam. So that's fine by some. Uh, in practice, uh, we can't protect those two uh, namespaces correctly because, as I said, set error limit is pretty much impractical, so not many uh, programs use that. So this is more or less how it, uh, how it works with current uh, uh, techniques that are used for sandboxing. Enter Capsicum. Uh, so uh, Capsicum basically provides two uh, things. One is tight sandboxing. Uh, cap enter allows you to enter capability mode where you have no access to any global namespaces. You cannot open files, you cannot do uh, internet connections. Uh, all the uh, rights or authorities uh, you have are either inherited or delegated to you through Unix domain sockets. <coughs> uh, and another one is capability rights where you can limit your file descriptors uh, to only some basic uh, functionality. For example, if you open a file, even for read-only, you can still change ownership, change the file mode, and do stuff like that. You can use capability rights to actually limit uh, file you open to, only, to do only reads or only writes. We won't talk about that, but we will talk about sandboxing some more. Uh, so this is our table from before. I'm not sure if you expected that, but with Capsicum, it looks much better. <coughs> <coughs> we can protect against uh, accessing all those namespaces, uh, and there is no question marks in here. So if you compare the code you have to write to, uh, to sandbox uh, using those uh, techniques I talked about, uh, it's pretty complex, and again, I'm not even, uh, I wasn't even trying to implement checking ownership of all the paths when you change root or uh, looking for open directory descriptors. Uh, so it's much simpler that, uh, than it, sh it should be. Uh, and you can replace all that with one cup enter call, and you get much more. So I think it's pretty nice. Uh, so current uh, Capsicum usage in base, uh, we have uh, DH client already using Capsicum, has D, has CTL, RQD, RQ, uh, who was uh, sandboxed by Marius during Google Summer of Code. Uh, we sandbox uh, Unique, audit this D of course, SSHD also now uses Capsicum sandbox. Uh, we also have TCP dump, K dump, and ping. And we are working on more, and we are, of course, uh, ready. Uh, welcome, uh, any patches welcome, I would say. So if you would like to sandbox some of the tools in the system, um, it should be pretty easy, I think. <coughs> OK, so Casper, uh, I will switch to Marius. Mar oh. OK, so hi there. 
pretty loud, okay? I think that's just nice. Okay. So before I start, I just want to say that this is my first conference and it's my first presentation in English, so uh, I'm pretty nervous, so please don't throw any tomatoes. So help me welcome Marius. <laughs> But uh, in FreeBSD, it's a daemon that provides us some functionality that it's not allowed in Kafka mod, Kafka mod. So uh, we try to uh, make the app of the uh, functions that are provided by Casper very similar to the uh, original uh, function. So, we have some uh, services in Casper. Uh, every of those services uh, are response for uh, some other functions, like uh, service uh, system DNS is providing us some um, mm, functions to get host, uh, get host uh, or uh, get address uh, information. And uh, like you see, we have um, Services like uh, system system uh, system out or system random, and uh, all these services can be also limited by uh, by program. So we could, uh, in some case, we could pro uh, limit the uh, system DNS to uh, be able only uh, resolve some uh, specific. Uh, type of uh, address. Tylko, tylko, tylko raz, bo możesz przeskoczyć. Nie, 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 tylko raz. Okej. Okay. Okay. Sorry for that. Powinno być dobrze, poczekaj, poczekaj. Ok, so here is the example of using Casper. Uh, we have a function to init Casper. It's a function that uh, connects uh, to the Casper daemon. Uh, we then uh, using cas uh, service open to open the special uh, services that we would like to. Uh, mm, yeah, here is um, uh, next we limit the services to. Um, only use uh, families of address. <coughs> like to uh, s that's how it goes those. And here we have uh, usage of uh, the Casper function. We need to use uh, this if that uh, macro because uh, we don't know if the uh, system is uh, installed with the uh, Casper daemon or uh, it's not have. So uh, we need to uh, use this feedback even mo more often than uh, it was seen, uh, provided here because we must check uh, before uh, including headers, be uh, before um, enter the, uh, creating the connection with uh, Casper and so on and so on. Okay, so here we have some programs that use uh, Casper. Uh, it's uh, TCP dump, Kadai, and Pin. We could uh, we could sandbox those applications, but uh, with such, uh, with but only with uh, some options that they are provided. So, uh, for example, with uh, TCP dump, we will be able to uh, use. Uh, uh, IP translation because, like we said before, uh, we uh, are unable to enter to any uh, namespaces. So uh, TCP dump will only uh, work with uh, the end options, and the uh, Kama um, will only work with uh, error options uh, because we would not be able to translate the. Um, 
going and point to the uh, text. Uh, okay, so with that, uh, um, after a while, we will also develop a uh, system file art services which uh, allow you to uh, sandbox uh, programs uh, which takes a list of um, files uh, as arguments. So uh, we are only, uh, before we don't have any services, uh, service that uh, was provided <coughs> as some uh, files. So uh, System File Arts is not our only the task um, service, but it's also a library. It's, uh, it's the first um, approach what, which we made uh, to uh, delete this every init depth uh, in uh, our program. So uh, System File Arts is uh, it's uh, divided uh, to two uh, separate models. One is uh, provided as a sandbox function, and another one is uh, provided as unprotected uh, function. So in sandbox mode, we use uh, Casper to, um, to provide us a description, but in uh, unprotected mode, we just use the uh, open function. It's one app to get there, so we, uh, we are able to uh, remove, uh, we don't need to check uh, which version we need to use. And it's still not committed yet, and I will say a little bit later why. <coughs> okay, so here is the app that we provide with file, the system file art. So we have uh, one function to int and to link the library. The second one is just checking if Casper is uh, running and if we should enter to uh, capability mode. Uh, another two are just uh, remains of open and, uh, sorry, the one is only the remains of uh, open function and the last one is just to uh, clear the structure that we need. So, uh, I would like to show you how uh, we sandbox uh, do see a program in FreeStep. So first one was to add two uh, heaters. One was uh, syscapability, which uh, provides all the capsule from uh, fun stuff. And the second one was uh, our uh, file art uh, header. And uh, we also add a global uh, file arts uh, variable. Mm, it's global because the diff with uh, changing the interface of uh, the uh, cell was a little bit uh, longer, but still not complicated. So the next step is just to init the uh, file arts um, uh, library. So we give RFC and RFV, we define uh, which what, uh, what uh, rights uh, he should be open. Uh, then we check if the uh, um, library was uh, initial, uh, in um, correctly. And then we check if uh, we using a unprotected mode or a sandbox mode. If we use a Casper, then we just enter to uh, capability. And last step was just to change open function to file arts open. So um, as you can see, that was very easy to do. So we also have some problems with correct uh, current model of Casper. Uh, we didn't mention that, but uh, Casper. Uh, is the demo that is uh, spawning the special protocol called Zygota, uh, which uh, then is um, <coughs> in the uh, exec function 
um, it uh, became uh, services that we want. So uh, Casper is running as a root because he needs uh, some additional utilities. So the first problem was a different credentials that Casper is uh, is running as root, and the process that is asking for the uh, some operations is running by the user. So for example, uh, in uh, Fireworks, we would uh, allow to uh, run services in as the root. Uh, we have uh, access to all uh, files, so we um, bypassing the standard uh, file rights. So we was able to um, we was able to um, repair this uh, problem by uh, using just uh, functions like uh, setb and setui and setgroup. So. Uh, now the uh, services is run the same uh, rights like uh, the program that is asking for. Another one is that we <coughs> provide uh, different resource limits. So like uh, Pablo mentioned before, we have functions like Evelyn, uh, which sets some limits on the uh, process. And we don't have any mechanism which uh, allow us to uh, get those uh, resource limits and to set it uh, to the Casper um, Casper um, server. So we have this problem that Casper has more uh, limits. It, it don't have any limits, and our process could have some limits. And another problem is about different working directories. It's also was connected to the uh, file art service. If we would like to um, open some files so using only the um, uh, relative uh, path, um, the Casper uh, service is open in a different directory than uh, system file cards. So we um, must somehow provide uh, Casper the information about in which directory we, uh, we are working. So uh, we was man and managed to do this by sending the correct uh, current, uh, directory to uh, Casper when we uh, opened the service. Uh, we sent it um, like uh, in uh, as the, the file descriptor because if we send it as the text, we could um, there will be rays that uh, the directory could be deleted or the, uh, some options of the directory could be changed. We also have problem, we will have uh, had problem uh, with different uh, humans uh, that Casper daemon uh, was running as root so it, it take the umas from the root uh, user and the, the user that uh, is running the process has, it could have uh, different humans. So this was easy to bypass by uh, sending every time if we, um, if we send the file with uh, of, uh, all, uh, all the create one, that uh, we only uh, also send the humans uh, to the customer. Uh, another problem which we was unable to solve is a different map levels that uh, root uh, user have and that uh, user that uh, run, the, uh, run the process. So uh, while uh, um, was sandbox, uh, there also um, uh, we also discovered that we have problems with different routing tables. Uh, you can set the routing table using uh, set fit function uh, per it, and it set a um, routing table for uh, only this one process. So we also don't have any mechanics to send the uh, current routing table to the customer. Another one is that we have different CPU sets and we also don't have any mechanics to do this. 
we also discovered uh, with uh, system file arts that if we use um, um, that as that uh, or that as that uh, as that uh, file, that it uh, won't work because uh, Casper has uh, a different file descriptor than the program which is uh, running it. And we could see here the example where we using uh, process substitution in a deep uh, program. And if the, the two uh, first lines of the um, deep output is the uh, file spelling to be fake. So uh, when we use it, the deep uh, sub, uh, process substitution, we receive uh, that the desert. So, uh, and if we try to open it, it uh, uh, it's uh, the same like we try to duplicate the uh, the, the descriptor. So uh, we have uh, here is also the problem that we cannot resolve. We also have a different process group and a different state group, and uh, we also have uh, and <coughs> because of. Uh, uh, using the multi uh, process and that the process is running by the different user and so on, it's harder to uh, ha uh, it's harder to audit or address the original program. Okay. Uh, uh, so just to make it clear, can you hear me? Uh, does it work? Does it work? No. How about now? 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 Okay. Uh, just to make it clear, uh, we are able to securely uh, send credentials to the uh, Casper daemon, current process credential, because Unix domain sockets allow to do that, but we cannot securely send any other stuff, like current working directory uh, or um, mandatory access control labels or uh, uh, UMAS because it can be forged. We would have to uh, send it as data and uh, of course the sandbox could send whatever uh, it wants to send. So uh, the future goals we are looking at uh, is to el eliminate the pro this problem, uh, this separation that uh, uh, the sandbox process, uh, that the service process is forged by the Casper daemon by just moving from a daemon model to more a library model, where basically you just initialize uh, Casper library, not a daemon, uh, when you start, and then all, this, all the service processes will be uh, children of, of the, uh, the process itself. There will be no separate daemon. So it will inherit all the, uh, mm, all the uh, attributes of the original process, like working directory, umask, mandatory access control labels, uh, it will be easier to audit or k-trace such process. Uh, and of course we are looking uh, how to lower uh, the bar for new uh, Capsicum and Casper uh, consumers. Of course Casper itself is a way to lower the limit because uh, in capability mode you cannot access global namespaces so basically what Casper does is to provide you way to uh, to access the global namespaces in a restricted manner. In this TCP dump case, we were, we were limiting uh, a system uh, DNS service only to uh, answer to uh, reverse uh, uh, hostname lookups. So you can only uh, uh, translate IP addresses to host names, not the other way around. Uh, another way to lower the bar is uh, uh, Mario uh, system file arcs where we use one API uh, and there are no if defs. Uh, you just use the same API. Uh, either you have Capsicum uh, or Casper or not. You have just the same API and it will discover if you uh, actually can sandbox or not and it will either open files directly or, or will open them through this Casper uh, service. Uh, Okay, <coughs> so I think that's all we had for today. Are there any, any questions? Close your eyes.
Yes. Yes. Uh, you mean but uh, by trying to uh, protect the uh, debugging applications or Uh, well, uh, KDump is uh, a case of uh, debug application that uh, we uh, did sandbox, just to be sure, because, for example, if you are a FreeBSD developer and you uh, receive uh, Ktrace uh, output, uh, I would prefer to analyze it in sandbox, not directly. So we did do that, of course. There are much more tools like that to... Uh, to sandbox, but of course we are welcome to uh, to commit any patches you have. <laughs> any other questions? Yes. So with uh, SSH using Caps does that cause trouble if I want to use Jasapi authentication because then it has to go and open the key tab, which is a new file? Uh, can you tap this on the back? <laughs> I don't know. Yes, actually, uh, the uh, sandbox error limit that is also in OpenSSH doesn't allow to even create new descriptors. So the sandbox itself probably is not the process that is going to interact with uh, stuff like that. Yes? Uh, the, this Capscom is not portable, right? It's private. Uh, the question is if Capscom is portable. Of course, we are fighting uh, for Capsicum to be portable by trying to prove that that's the way to do stuff. And uh, uh, there is ongoing port to uh, Linux sponsored by Google. Uh, so Google is porting Capsicum to, uh, to Linux. So uh, hopefully, uh, from what I heard, uh, OpenBSD also like the likes the design. So hopefully, uh, Capsicum will be ported to OpenBSD as well. And others will follow, hopefully. And finally, we will have portable capsicum, which basically we can use instead all of those nifty tricks. Uh, has the world uh, in uh, Dragonfly BSD to uh, port the capsicum project? Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much.